start the tributes. If anyone have any tribute. Please continue wearing your mask. She was a friend of my business and she grew herself into a very close and personal friend. And during this time, I just want to encourage you to be strong. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away by the power In the power of your love, Lord, unveil my eyes, let me see you face to face, the knowledge of your love as you live in me. Lord, renew my mind as your will unfold in my life in living every day by the power of your love hold me close let your love surround me bring me now draw me to your side In the power of your love.
is impossible. I will hear your voice no more. I know you can feel my tears, and you don't want me to cry, yet my heart is broken because I can't understand why someone so precious had to them. I pray that God will give me strength and somehow get me through. As I struggle with the headache, the heartache that came when I lost you. Pleasant good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Matthew. I just like a family to KK Davis and I wish you all the best. I'm sorry she gone. I love her so much. She was there for me and my twins them. She helped me very much. With when they needed help in the schoolwork, she was there for me in the was she family. She always tell me send them. She was always there for me. She was at my house. She also sleep there with me some of the times. She also helped me with my phone and everything. Every time I needed help, she was there for me. And I just like to say to the family, stay strong and focus on God. God is always going to be there for you. Remember, there is power in the name of the Lord. No matter what you're going through, keep your heads up high. And God will love you and put your trust in him. Alia J. Nisi, stay strong for Keke. She want you all to stay strong and be there for her. Not only when someone die, the family come around, but always be there for your family in sickness and in death. Stay strong. God love you all. of the Bastia High School. Kaliko was one of our sterling athletes and so it's really hard for us to see her go like this. And on behalf of the track team and the, the principal, Mr. Benjamin, we want to encourage your family to just stay strong and uh, remind you that God understands tears. I'm also here in the capacity of dance specialist Kaniko was a member of one of our masquerade troops and so she played a very strong part in our nation's culture and so we want to convey our sympathies as well on behalf of director Mr. Troy Mills. I want to leave you with this song to remind us that life is very short and uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but if we know who holds tomorrow and trust in him, our lives will be made better. Jesus said, here I stand, would you please let me in? And you said, I will tomorrow. Jesus said, I am here supplies all your needs and you said I know but tomorrow tomorrow I'll give my life tomorrow I thought about today but it's so much easier
Good afternoon to all gathered here at the Sadler's Plain Field as we pay our last respect to our dear youthful sister Kaniqua David, better known as KK. KK was really just beginning life. At age 21, with one young infant child, typical of our young people here in St. Kitts and Nevis, went through the normal stages of her development, attended primary and secondary school, Competed not only academically but also on the field of sporting activity. Lived a life and now she is gone at age 21 years. This, of course, is tragic. Not only for the tremendous loss, especially leaving behind a young infant child, a mom, her dad, her siblings, aunts, uncles, and members of a large extended family, all mourning her loss today. The community of St. Paul's, the community of Newton Gall, the community of and what is most memorable. So sudden, so fatal an incident 
that all of us would remember. Let us therefore bring support to the family. Let us remember especially her mom who only a moment ago collapsed, collapsed under stress and anxiety, the mere loss of a loved one, a young daughter, unable to take it. And so we need the support of all of us in this community and beyond. If she and others come to terms with the permanent loss of her daughter, KK, Lee deserves our support. The entire community is therefore called upon to lend support at this time. The churches and their communities, we call on them to pray unceasingly so that this family, not only the victim, but those who would have been engaged in the incident, they too need our support and our prayers. On behalf of myself, on behalf of my family, on behalf of the communities that I represent in our parliament, I say to you that we shall remember you in our prayers. We shall remember KK. We shall remember the hundreds, scores, and hundreds of friends, young people in particular, who would have lost a true friend in the person of KK. Your soul rest in peace and rise again to be with our Lord and Maker at the right time. God bless you all. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Lab Mega Funeral Home, we would like to announce the final viewing. We would like the immediate family to come forward for their final respects. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
I invite us who are sitting to please stand. The word of God declares that we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. That if we live, we live to the Lord and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live, whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of God also says, as a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, says the Lord. And so, even his word we can find comfort in, which said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we all say, Amen. We join our voices as we sing the hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a friend. this afternoon 
Indeed, God, our hearts are stirred, spirits broken, a community, Lord God, torn. As God, another one of our soldier, our loved one, is no longer with us. God, indeed, these are some trying times. These are some hard-pressed times. These are some overwhelming times. But God, I want to thank you that you are God who is still very present in times of trouble. And you are God who is still present in times of grief. And so God, I want to thank you that your hand is poured out over this community, Lord God, even in this season. We thank you, God, that you have not abandoned us, even in this time of grief. And God, yet, while the pain is so unbearable, while, Lord God, our hearts feel, Lord God, this loss, we ask, God, that you undergird us in this season, and you be the one to carry us, God, as only you can. Draw us, God, into your bosom, that we can find, Lord God, a sense of safety and comfort, knowing, God, that we do not have to walk this road alone. God, a family is torn apart. A community, Lord God, is distressed. But I thank you that this afternoon you are the God of peace. And so, God, I declare peace shall reign over every heart, God, this afternoon as we gather in this setting. God, you would have given her to us for this lifetime. And so, Father God, for every blessing that she has been to every person she encountered, God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for the gift that you gave to this world through KK. And God, even as she is being laid rest today, Lord God, we thank you even now that your arms are still outstretched over her family, especially God, her daughter. God, we thank you even now for the strength you shall give this community and her family, especially her mom, God, as she has to bear this reality that she's laying her child to rest. God, we wish this upon no parent. And so, God, give her that sense of, of strength that she needs this afternoon, Lord God, as she tarries with this reality, God, as she bears the fact that her daughter, God, will no longer come home. I pray, Father God, that indeed, as the days go by, that, God, you will give her the strength she needs to per persevere in this lifetime, oh God. So, God, as we worship this afternoon, we thank you for your presence. And God, we thank you for how you are going to speak through us and to us in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen and Amen. We sing the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, All Our Sins and Griefs to Bear. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry.
My family, I greet us in no other name but the wonderful, mighty, and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I welcome us to this time of remembrance and celebration and giving God thanks for KK's life. I truly want to encourage us, remind us to continue to walk as one as a community, to seek out each other's good in this season, and to keep having each other's back. All right? All right? I know it is a tough time, but even in this tough season, we have to band as one in the name of Jesus Christ. All right? So today I just want to acknowledge the grieving family. also want to acknowledge in our presence, none other than Dr. Denzel Douglas. Good afternoon, sir. And all of those who are coming from near and far, those who she journeyed throughout school with, those who would say, I know she's in she in Pampers, you know, and now have to witness this today. I truly pray that God continues to uphold us this afternoon, all right? At this time, I invite um, three tributes. First, a friend of the family, followed by the Joshua Obadiah Primary School, and then Collision Band, then the Remembrance. These will go unannounced. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, everybody. We hail from the Joshua Bedaya Williams Primary School. This is where Miss Mentos is currently one of our colleagues, and we are here to sympathize with her at this time. May you be comforted at this time, Miss Mentos. Clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an on 
Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I stand here in eight mixed emotions. I was supposed to be having KK have been with the band so, so many years. I mean, I remember when we come to two sessions, one person we can count on is her. She was the life of the party. I mean, I mean, when the singer's singing, I mean, she don't watch no face. She'll be the one to start to dance first. But when I got the call the morning to go to the hospital, I was shocked. Lee, Lee told me to go in first. When the nurse said, come and see first, Lee said, Sherwin, go first. When I lift the sheet, it was unbelievable. That goes to show us, show us how life is and fragile life is. Kick left home, not knowing whether or not she she will return home. They used to say, today you're here, tomorrow you're gone. But today you're here, today you're gone. Keke has had so many plans. I know she wanted to keep her first birthday party for her daughter. That will never happen now for her. But we can assure her, her daughter will have the, 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 that first birthday party. On behalf of the band, it's hard for my members, especially her child father is one of my lead singers. KK, Collision Band will miss you. I won't say that you are a fan, you are the ear condition of the band. We will miss you. As I sing this song, sheltered in the arms of God, let's to reminisce on the life of KK. the touch of hands so kind and tender they're leading me to the part where I must draw I have no fear for Jesus walk beside me for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. So let the storm which hides the dark clothes rise. They don't worry me. For I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not on earth can harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. I shall hear the call from heaven's portal. Come home, my child, this the last mile you must try. I fell asleep and wake in God's new heaven. Sheltered safe within the arms of God. So let the storm which eyes, the dark clouds rise. They don't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me 
and not an earth can harm me for I'm sheltered in the arms of God so let the storm be high the dark clouds rise they don't worry me for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not on earth can harm me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Everybody sing it to me. So let the storm which eyes, the dark close eyes, they don't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walk with me, and no on earth can harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. For I'm sheltered in the arms of We want to say thank you to those who just brought tributes. At this time, I invite Sharissa Green to do formal remembrance. Keniko Oksana Kiwani David, better known as Keke, was born on the 20th April 2000 to Denise Mentos and Kenrick David. She weighed 10 pounds and 7 ounces. As she grew, I, re I realized she learned things easily and quick. She attended the Sadler's Nursery. Then at, at the age of three, she went on the love to the Love Center Preschool, where she learned very fast and was a smart three-year-old. At the age of five, she attended the Beach Allen Primary School in 2005, where she continued being a very smart child who loves running, netball, and all other sports like masquerade during Christmas time. Those seven years, she entered all sorts of pageants where she placed queen or first runner-up. Keke was always smiling. In 2012, Keke entered the Bastia High School, where she met new people from different schools. When Keke reaches home from her first day of school, she was, up she was upset, so she was asked what's wrong, and she answered and said, Mommy, they put me in 1G2A, and I don't belong there, you know. So her mom had to call the principal to find out why in order, found out why in order for her to feel better. Keke wasn't no easy child to deal with. In high school, she was a star athlete who loved running. Keke was always the life of the party, always want go dance and drink pear jello, and the only top shelf she loved so much was Malibu and pineapple. She was very outspoken, never afraid to say what's on her mind, and felt she was always right. Keke liked, me, Keke liked meeting people, 
love to dance, love a bad past love a bad pastor and Tootsie Roll. Miss Photogenic always wants your phone to take pictures and her number one priority was her daughter Zai. She loved her loved her nieces and nephew and would help them with their homework when needed. One thing about her One thing about her and Jay, they would argue for snacks and punch Cuba. KK was always the referee when Alia and Tayana fighting. KK was KK was always the the person to leave the house last, always late. Could not talk to her because if you do, she will block everybody and leave the path. Everybody and leave the family chat. She used to give us a run for our money. And if you only peep in her room and the baby is up, she would say, Come for your niece. Don't bother talk about when her big sister comes over. She gonna tell Zai, Look your auntie. Auntie, come for your child. One thing about Keke, she used to always talk about her baby sister. Keke was, Keke always enjoyed sleeping by her big sister the day before juve morning. She always enjoyed going to Sunday school and vacation Bible school where she took my brothers. If I had one wish, it's to see your small, neat face again with that smile that can bright up the room. Rest easy, baby girl. Or as my mom would say, my Tootsie Roll. You will always be remembered. This afternoon, we have an opportunity as gathered people here to bless the family through an offering. So this afternoon, as we receive the offering, all money is collected, we go to the family. And so I encourage us to give with a willing heart. As we do so, the songs we will declare, uh, I heard an old, old story, victory in Jesus and what a fellowship what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. We'll receive an offering this afternoon. The offering goes to the family of the deceased. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing. 
Let us pray. Father, unto you we lift this offering. And thank you, Lord God, that we have this opportunity to give back and to bless this family in this way. God, we thank you for how you are going to multiply. And God, how you are going to expand their territory. And God, I declare that there will be a family that will lack nothing. And everything, God, that they need, your hand will provide. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Amen and amen. I invite our two readers to come as you lead us in the readings of Psalm 42, followed by Revelation chapter 21 and verse 1 through to 5. Psalm 42, followed by Revelation chapter 21 and verse 1 through to 5. The scripture reading is taken from Psalms 42. As the heart panteth after the water books, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, for the help of his countenance. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy waters faults. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Good afternoon. The scripture reading is taken from Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 5. Then I saw a new sky and a new earth, for the former sky and the former earth had passed away and there no longer existed any sea. And I saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, all arrayed like a bride, beautified and adorned for her husband. Then I heard a mighty voice from the throne, and I received this distinct word, saying, See, the abode of God is with men, and he will live among them, and they shall be his people. The God shall personally be with them, and be their God. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall be there any anguish, nor grief, nor pain anymore. For the old conditions and the former order of things have passed away. And he who is seated on the throne said thee, I make all things new. Also he said, record this, for these things are faithful and true. Amen. As we prepare to reflect on God's word, we stand as we sing the hymn, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus, how I trust how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust. We sing that chorus again, Jesus. easy to trust God in times like these but we're still encouraged and we're still called to trust God I want us to really take just a few seconds and look around to see who is next to you don't just because sometimes when we're under the mask, we don't even realize who passed us. I just want us to take a few seconds. And those of you who are on the outskirts, I really draw our attention at this time. To just look around and to see who is in front of you, who is behind of you, and who is next to you. Because God forbid... God forbid, we don't know if today is our last. Today, I declare God's word to us from James chapter 4 and verse 13 to 16. And it simply says, look here, you say today or tomorrow, we are going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year that we will do business there and make a profit. But how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? For your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while and then it's gone. But what you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own pretentious plans and all such boasting is evil. My family, this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. 
Lord God, even as you continue to minister to us, and God, even as we continue to acknowledge your awesome presence, we ask God that your word will truly find root in the hearts of all people gathered. And that, Father God, we may be able to take up our lives more bravely and consider, God, where we are as we are living each day that comes our way. God, may your word truly seek to encourage and strengthen us even in times like these. In Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Amen. Today I declare unto us, my family, let today count. Make use of today in God, for tomorrow may be too late. Let today count. And make use of today in God, for tomorrow may be too late. You see, there are no more tomorrows for KK. All she had left was a today when she took her last breath on Saturday, August 29th, 2021. It is hard enough to get a call that your child was in a vehicular accident, but only soon after to be told that she had succumbed to the injuries sustained. But then to bear this heartbreaking, numbing, painful news to the rest of your children and family. And then to look in the eyes of an innocent baby and hold her, crying, knowing that her mother is not coming home. One day she will verbally express the need for her mother. And unfortunately, you will have to relive that day once more to tell her that her mother died. My family, that type of pain is not wished on anyone here this afternoon. And so the expectation was that KK was supposed to return home that night safely to experience another tomorrow and not have her story end tragically at today. Like Ecclesiastes 8.8 8 says, none of us can hold back our spirit from departing. None of us has the power to prevent the day of our death because there is no escaping that obligation, that dark battle. And in the face of death, wickedness will certainly not rescue the wicked. And so even in accepting this truth, we will all die and return to the dust from which we came. For some of us, it hurts more how a person dies. Young, vibrant, athletic, joyful, spirited, a dancer, some of the ways many of us have been remembering KK. Like her, life tells us to be prepared. Life tells us to plan. And so we grow up thinking that there are certain things that we need to put in place so that when we get older, we will be taken care of. Life tells us it is important to have certain things. Life says, get the life insurance and get the health insurance. Life says, save and put money in the bank or credit union. Life says, buy a piece of land, get a house, you know, secure things for the future. Life says, get an education, it is the key to success. But James asks all of us here this afternoon a very important question. How? How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? The answer is simple. We do not know. Except that we may have a lot of plans, a lot of hopes, a lot of dreams, a lot of goals and expectations for the future. I want to finish high school and college. I want to make my parents proud and give back to them. I want to see my children and grandchildren grow old. I want to get married. I want to have children. I want to own my own business. I want to travel the world. But you see, my family, plans are necessary to make. And I dare say that these are good desires and good plans. And the expectations of having these things are also good. But I echo words of wisdom that comes from James, which reminds us that our life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it is gone. 
meaning that nothing lasts forever except God's word. And I want to remind us this afternoon that every time God wakes you and I up, it is a gift. And it is an opportunity to say, God, I thank you for allowing me the breath of air today. So is there somebody this afternoon that is grateful that God has given them life because life is a gift from God? I dare say again, plans are necessary to make. But he makes an important point that in all our planning for tomorrow's on today, remember God must be part of it and say, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. I dare say to us this afternoon, my family, as we go through this time, spend more time doing the things that matter most. Allow yourself to live a life of peace, to have a peace of mind as you live. Have peace with those around you. Do not be like those who wake up each day, wake up each week, wake up each month, wake up each year as if their only agenda and job on this earth is to create chaos and confusion. Some fights, my family, are not worth it, but simply robbing you and I of our joy and sanity of mind. The word of God in Romans 12, 18 says, if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. You see, my family, the world has enough troubles of its own. But I pray peace for you, as many around us find the stress of life to be too much and are taking their lives around us. I say to you, I say to you, spend more time doing the things that matter most. And one of the things that matters most is having a peace of mind as you live. I also say to you, spend time doing the things that matter most. That is, spend time with your family and your friends. Cherish the people who are in your life. Give God thanks each day for their love. Give God thanks each day for the lessons. Give God thanks each day for their support. See, sometimes we look around and we are searching for others to satisfy our need to be loved and supported. But the truth is, many times the right people are already in our lives. The right people are already around us and we don't even realize it. Spend time loving on those people who spend time with you, who look out for you, who call you, who make sure that you are doing well. Give them thanks. Spend time thanking them. Tell them how much you love and appreciate them. Give them their honor while they are still with you on this earth. Spend more time with each other instead of going out every weekend with friends and co-workers. Spend time with people who care about you. Spend time with your family. Plan a games night. Go to the beach with your family. Take a picnic. Sometimes we come home Rather than putting down our phones, we are on it 24-7, constantly. And I dare say, we miss the opportunity to learn something about a brother or sister right in our own house. To learn something about our children right in our own house. And most time, the world know more about us than our own family does. Because we share more with others than those we see face to face. I want to say to us, spend time doing the things that matter most. Should there be any brokenness that may exist in your home, try your best to mend it. I'll say it again. Should there be any brokenness that may exist in your home, try your best to mend it. The truth is, some broken relationships will never go back to how it was, but choose to forgive and heal your heart. You see, we cannot control what people say or what people do to us, but we can control how we respond and how we react to how people treat us. I also want to say to us, do not let our last words that someone hears from us who we say we care about be, I hate you. And then if that person pass, we allow that guilt to eat us alive. Spend times with the people who matter the most to you. Because too many of us have these, I should have. 
If only I knew. God has given us today. Let today count. Make use of today in God because tomorrow may be too late. I also want to say to us, spend time doing the things that matter most because time, time it is fleeting and truly waits for none of us. Make use of every precious time that we are given on this earth while remaining in the will of God for your life. It is Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16 which says, making the best use, we ought to be making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Make the best use of the time we have because the days are what? Evil. Sometimes we say, I have time. I have time. I have time. And then when the time passed, we realized we really didn't have time. But if God was giving you time and time and time again, we should have been making the best use of it. I want to say to you, don't waste your time on trivial matters that will rob you of doing things that would have greatly benefited you more. And that includes people too. Don't waste your time on people who are going to rob you of your time. Sometimes we are around some people and they take, take of our time. But when it is we ask them for their time, they cannot be found. I say to you, do not waste time on trivial matters and trivial, trivial people who will rob you of doing things that would have greatly benefited you, greatly benefited you more. Do not let people waste your time. And you do not waste people's time. Time is precious. Stop saying yes to people. Stop saying yes to things that should have been a no in the first place. Choose to be more productive to produce quality results. You see, time is something that you and I can never get back. Once it is gone, we cannot recover it. Even in death, the word of God says there is an appointed time. As just as it is appointed for man to die once. And after that comes the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 I want to say to us, spend time doing the things that matter most. Not only to have a peace of mind. Not only to spend time with family and friends. Not only to make the best use of your time. But I want to say to you this afternoon, spend time. Let today count and have a relationship with God. You see, ultimately God is the giver of this life. In all our getting and acquiring it in this life, that every move must see us have a relationship with God, not just a transactional one, not just a relationship that say, God, if you give me something, I go in and give you something. No, can we, we have too much of that around here. And if I don't give you something, then, then, then you don't want to do anything for me. Sometimes you must, people must be able to do things for us without even getting anything in return. And I want to say to us, have a relationship with God in this season. We need to wake up as a people. We need to open our eyes as a people to see that the time is fleeting. That time is passing us by. And all we have is today in the name of Jesus. And we need to let today take count and as he has given us life today i say to us make it right have a relationship with god almighty clearly his word says that his mercy falls on the just and the unjust but once we accept his son jesus christ as our lord and savior and choose to live a life that is ordered by god may i say to you we don't have to worry about anything outside of god we may rule our lives, yet we are still so limited somebody. In God, he is the ruler and he is the leader of our lives. And with God, I dare say as well, there is no limit. What may seem impossible with man, his word says, it is, what may seem impossible with man, it is possible with God somebody. You see, <clears throat> this is the essence of what James was saying to his people. That in all our planning, in our preparation, 
in our acquiring, in our drive to fulfill external needs. That is to have a child, to have a house, marriage, etc. He says, do not neglect also your internal needs, your spiritual and emotional needs. And I've come to find that if as people of God, we take care of our internal needs, that is our spiritual and our emotional needs, then we wouldn't have to stress about the external needs because God would have comforted, comforted us with the, ex, with the internal needs and we would not have to worry so much about so many things because he said to seek him first and his kingdom and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. So I know what I'm talking about, young people. I'm young just like you. But a long time ago, I realized that this life is not worth living if God is not part of it. And I have truly said that I have seen God working in my life. Everything I have asked God for according to his will, his hands hath provided. And everything he has blocked has been for my good. And I want to say to somebody here this afternoon, you may be thinking, oh, I'm not getting certain things, or oh, I'm not reaching a certain place. Maybe God is the one that's blocking it because he's protecting you from something this afternoon. And so I say to you, do not neglect the fact that God must and should be considered early that God should be consulted early. That God should be at the forefront of every single planning. People used to laugh at me. I said to them sometimes when I'm standing up in the closet and I say, God, where are we here today? It may sound trivial. It may sound shallow. But I want when I step out, I look good in the name of Jesus. And when we can't find certain things, what we just say? God help me find it, ain't it? Because we realize that God can't leave out of the mixture, man. There's something about when we call on the name of God. There's something when we call on the name of Jesus. So we understand that God has that power to settle all things. So we must put God at the forefront. Because at the end of the day, it is his will that must be done. His word says in Proverbs 16, 9, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. I know that we would love to live in a world where there is no pain, no sickness, no disease. But I want to tell you, it is possible. <laughs> Just not this world. For I know a place where his word says, he will wipe away every tear from our eyes, that there shall be no more death in this place, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things shall pass away. This promise is laid up for those who die in Christ Jesus. So I say, let today count. Make use of today in God because tomorrow may be too late. It may be too People of saddlers, family, mommy, classmates, nothing we do or say can bring Keke back. But in the midst of such a tragedy, we give God thanks for these 20 plus years of life. But more so, we also want to give God thanks for the gift of her daughter, who I declare shall make her own strides in this world. And I want to pray a blessing upon her that wherever God plants her feet, she shall cause waves. I want to say over her that she shall be a fearless child in God. I want to say over her that she shall jump over every hurdle that shall come in her way. I want to say in her valleys, God shall be her keeper. On the mountaintop, God shall be her lifter. To KK's mom and family, may God use her daughter to restore the joy that was taken from you that night when she got into that accident. May she be the light that leads each of you out of this dark time. 
tunnel in this season. Truly, his word says, weeping men do for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And I want to serve you. May this child be your joy in the morning, your joy in the night, no matter what it is. When you look on her, let the joy of the Lord just be your strength. To the community, I say, surround each other. Look out for each other. Carry each other. Lean on each other. Because it is so important in this season. Let today count. Make use of today in God because tomorrow may be too late. As I close, remember, there are no more tomorrows for Kiniqua David. All she had left was a today. And all we have right now in this moment is today. Be at peace with others. Spend time with your family and loved ones. Use your time wisely and ultimately have a relationship with God. Because as James says, we do not know what our life will be like tomorrow. Because our life is like the morning fog. It is here a little while and then it's gone. But say, if the Lord wants us, we will live and do this or that. Let today count. Make use of today in God because tomorrow may be too late. May God Almighty continue to minister to our hearts this afternoon as we honor KK in this final rite in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. There's a song I was going to declare, but it would have been declared early in the atmosphere. Tomorrow may be too late, and I think we would have received that already. And so we're going to stand, and I want us to stand. And we're going to sing that hymn again, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Because I want us to speak it over ourselves, to trust him in this season. How I've proved him, or and or. Where the musicians them gone? They want to upset me this afternoon. No, man, this is church, man. Come on, come on. Musicians, come, man. Knock a little bit for us, man. I wish I could play keyboard. Let us stand. They're gone? All right. Let us stand. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know that said the Lord Jesus, Jesus how I trust him how I Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood. And in simple faith to plunge me, neither healing, cleansing blood. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how Trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust him, precious Jesus.
Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust him more. Thank you, drama. God bless you. You may be seated as we continue in prayer. Let us pray, Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, hear us. By your human birth, your obedience and faithfulness, by your prayers and tears, by your agony and passion, by your dying words, by your reconciling death, your rest in the grave, by your triumphant resurrection and your abiding presence, bless and comfort us, O Lord. Repeat the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, before whose face generations rise and pass away, we praise and bless your name for all who have departed this life in faith, and especially for Keniqua Keke David, for all your kindness to her throughout her earthly life, we give you thanks. God, we thank you that for her all sickness and sorrow are ended, and that death itself is past. And Almighty God, may we, inspired by the example of your saints, run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, so that when this mortal life is ended, we may be gathered with those whom we have loved in the kingdom of your glory, where there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away through Jesus Christ our Lord. You are also the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. You make nothing in vain and love all that you have made. But God, we ask that you look in tender mercy on your people in this tragic loss. Enable them, God, to find in you their refuge and their strength, because you are a very present help in trouble. Sustain them and deliver them from any bitterness, despair, and doubt of your love. Comfort them in their sadness. Uphold them with your strong love. Help them to face the future without fear, knowing that they and all whom they love are in your hands and that nothing in life, not even death itself, can separate any one of us from your love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father God, even as we continue to go through the changes of time and to the rest and blessedness of eternity, be near us to comfort and uphold. Make us so that your people are precious in your sight and that they live evermore with you. And God, as we thank you for Keniqua David, whose life we shared, may we trust you at this time of parting. God, give us of your strength that we may take up our lives more bravely and seek to be more faithful in duty and more loving and helpful to others, following those who are no longer with us here on earth. And may we, in our turn, Find in your great mercy the perfect and unending rest of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite us to stand as we commend Keniqua to the mercy of God our maker and redeemer.
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, the giver of all comfort. Father God, we ask that you deal graciously with all who know, passing every care upon you, they may know the consolation of your life. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the grace of the Holy Spirit, rest in you and bear with us now and always. Amen. We're going to join our voices as we sing. <laughs> sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions of Oh, God. 
police call up yonder I'll be here. When the trumpet of the luscious sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal back and fair, when the same of us shall gather over on the other shore, and the one shall run on the hardy air. When the world is called up here, when the world is called up here, when the world is called up here,
There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel State. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from
family members and then friends. 